All right, hello everyone. Welcome. This is an education abroad info session for programs relevant for the College of Agricultural Science, um, specifically semester long programs. My name is Drew Doty. I'm uh, our session is going to be moderated today by Derek Smallwood. If you have any questions as we move through the presentation, please feel free to drop them into the Q and A box. Um, and we'll do our best to answer those as quickly as possible. Just a heads up, this session is being live streamed to YouTube and it will be recorded. So if you have to step out early or if you want to share this with anyone else, um, you will be able to view this later for the recording on YouTube. I'm gonna kick us off by reading the CSU land acknowledgement. Colorado State University acknowledges with respect that the land we are on today, the traditional and ancestral homelands of the Arapaho, Cheyenne, and Ute nations and peoples. This was also a site of trade, gathering, and healing for numerous other native tribes. We recognize the indigenous peoples as original stewards of this land and all the relatives within it. As these words of acknowledgement are spoken and heard, the ties nations have to their traditional homelands are renewed and reaffirmed. CSU is founded as a land grant institution, and we accept that our mission must encompass access to education and inclusion. And significantly that our founding came at a dire cost to native nations and peoples whose land this university was built upon. This acknowledgement is the education and inclusion we must practice in recognizing our institutional history, responsibility, and commitment. All right. So just to repeat, my name is Drew Doty. I'm an education abroad coordinator in the Office of International Programs. I use he, him, his pronouns, and I regionally advise for programs in Oceania, which includes Australia, New Zealand, South Pacific Island nations, as well as Spain and Portugal. I also have a portfolio of faculty-led programs here at CSU um, that happen all over the world. And then I work pretty closely with our scholarships and access group here in our office. All right, before we get started, I wanna clear the air and talk about a few myths that tend to, we tend to hear circulating around campus about education abroad. First one, it's really common we hear students think that by going abroad, they're going to delay their graduation. This is not true. In fact, if you prepare well enough in advance, you should be able to stay on track to graduate on time. You're going to actually enhance your degree by going abroad. And in some cases, if it's your choice, you may even still be able to graduate early. Another common myth that we hear about in our office is that going abroad is going to be too expensive, that it's not affordable. This is also not necessarily true. While there are certainly programs um, that we offer in our office which are more expensive than a typical semester here at CSU in Fort Collins, we have a plethora of programs around the world uh, that cost the same as a semester here at CSU if not even less in some situations. So we'll talk about this a little bit later. You are also able to use your financial aid uh, from CSU to pay for your education abroad program, which means that if you choose an affordable program, in some cases, you may even be saving money by going abroad during certain terms. Third, we hear students often think that they aren't going to be able to get their course requirements fulfilled while they're abroad. It kind of plays into that first myth that we talked about delaying your graduation. Again, it's not true. Majority of the programs that we offer through our office, you're going to be able to find credit towards your major, if not general elective credits here at CSU, which will ultimately help you stay on track to graduate on time. I'm going to talk a little bit more about how you about credits later in this presentation. Um, so I'm sure you have more questions. We'll get to that in just a little bit. Lastly, we hear a lot of concerns about safety, particularly right now, given that we're in a global pandemic. I want you to know we have a full risk management team. Um, Derek Smallwood, who's with us today, is our, actually our international risk manager. It is his job um, 
along with his team um, of colleagues to monitor various sources, keep tabs on what's happening in the world at all times to make sure that all of our students who are going abroad are doing so safely so that they can have the best time possible while they're overseas. All right, so like I mentioned, we're here to talk about programs for students who are part of the College of Agricultural Sciences. Just a few statistics um, from past years. Knowing these numbers may be just a little bit skewed given that our world has more or less been shut down for the past year and a half or so. Um, in the past five years, we've had 312 students go abroad from the College of Agricultural Sciences in total. New Zealand, Mexico, Australia, and Canada were the most popular destinations where we had the most students from CAS go abroad. And of the majors within this college, animal sciences and horticulture and landscape architecture tend to send the most students abroad. However, I want to caveat, caveat that with um, if you are not a part of either of those two majors, we still have plenty of programs around the world. Um, for you to go abroad. So if you're agricultural resource economics, agricultural biology, bioagricultural science, soil and crop sciences, there is a program for you. Um, so don't let these numbers scare you away from going abroad. We've made it really easy. If you're interested to learn about what programs might fit your major really well, on our website, there's a recommended programs tab that you can see up at the top bar. If you click on that, click on College of Agricultural Sciences, you'll come to this page. From here, you can click on your major where we've created a list in partnership with your academic department of programs around the world that are gonna work really well for your major. These are programs where it's going to be easier for you to find coursework to fulfill your major requirements and maybe some of your elective requirements as well. So if you're unsure of where to start looking for programs, go abroad and you're interested, this is probably the best place for you to begin. That said, if you look through the list and you're not finding a program that excites you or you're not finding a program that's gonna work for you, please come talk with us in our office You'll get more information about our, uh, you'll get our contact information a little bit later, um, but please come talk to any one of us in our office. We'd be more than help, happy to help you find a program that's going to fit your unique needs. Um, just because it doesn't show up on a recommended programs list doesn't mean that there isn't a great program out there for you. All right. I'm going to start talking about just a few course options, excuse me, a few program options that are going to work really well for CAS students. First one being Lincoln University. Lincoln is in Christ, it's just outside of Christchurch, New Zealand. It's on the South Island of New Zealand, which is a little more rural compared to the North Island. South Island is where all the huge mountains, glaciers, rivers, kind of the outdoor recreation scene that New Zealand is famous for. A lot of that exists on the South Island, um, which makes Lincoln University a really popular destination for students at CSU. Lincoln is one of our oldest partnerships here. We've been working with them for over 24 years now. In the fall semesters, this program is an exchange program where we typically send anywhere from like four to eight students to Lincoln. And then we also host students from Lincoln here at CSU. Then in the spring semester, it works a little bit differently. We actually send a faculty member from the College of Agricultural Science to go live in residence at Lincoln University. They're there as an added support to you as a student if you choose to study abroad during that term. They'll be doing kind of their own research um, they won't necessarily be teaching courses, um, but because we have that added uh, layer of support for students during the spring semester, we typically see higher numbers of CC students during the spring term, anywhere from 20 up to 30, maybe even more. The other thing I wanted to mention about Lincoln, this is an agricultural school through and through. Its roots are deep in agricultural history of New Zealand. 
Um, and so no matter what major you are um, in CAS, you should have no problem finding coursework at this university. I'll make a side note right now. Um, it, it feels a little funny to be talking about Lincoln because unfortunately right now due to COVID-19, the borders with New Zealand are still closed to international travel. We're hoping that they will open up again sometime in 2022. Um, if this program sparks your interest, please reach out to me anytime. I'm more than happy to give you kind of a status update on what borders are looking like. Um, right now we are tentatively planning for students to be able to resume um, study abroad at Lincoln for the fall 2022 term. All right, next program I wanna to talk to you about is, this is an CSU affiliated program. What this means is that for this program, you're going to work with one of our affiliate partners. In this case, it's ISA, which stands for International Studies Abroad. Our affiliates are amazing. They provide a huge level of support to our students while they're preparing to go abroad, while they're abroad, and even when they return home. You'll work with both our office as well as the affiliate to prepare for your journey, as well as while you're overseas. And you may, in some instances, your affiliate may even include some excursions throughout the country that you're going to as a part of your program fee that you'll get to do with the cohort that you're joining for the program. One I want to talk to you about today is ISA Seoul in South Korea. If you choose to go on this program, you're going to be taking coursework at Korea University, which is one of South Korea's oldest, largest, and most top ranking universities. It's actually known as the Ivy League Private University of South Korea. The campus is a world class institution that features a dynamic educational environment beautiful and conveniently located campus in the city and top quality student facilities. The university prides itself not only on being a progressive and globally conscious institution, offering a rich variety of courses in STEM, liberal arts and science, but also one that plays a role in preserving and developing Korea's unique culture. This is a really unique program. If you're interested in going to Asia, I highly consider you check it out. Um, for this program in our office, you would work with George Agres, who oversees all our programs in Asia. And the last program I wanted to highlight, this is a CSU faculty-led program, which means there's little transfer credits involved. You're going to get direct CSU credit for the program, and this is actually a full semester long. So we only have a handful, a small handful of full semester faculty led programs. This program is food and resource economics in Italy. You're going to be based in Florence. The program is going to be led by three professors in, from the College of Agricultural Science. Students participating in this program will sign up for two CSU courses for a total of six credits, and then you'll get seven transfer credits from our affiliate partner organization in Florence. So you'll have a total of 13 credits for the semester. Throughout the program, you're gonna be doing a few guided excursions around Italy, specifically going to Bologna and Modena. You'll visit the Chianti region. You'll visit different vineyards, balsamic vinegar facilities. You'll have the chance to meet with traditional Florentine artisans. You get to hike the scenic Fisole Hills around the city. You'll might be able to attend guest lectures on Italian cinema and embark on a literary treasure hunt to discover Florence through Dante's eyes. Again, a really interesting opportunity because you will actually be taught on this program by CSU faculty members. Um, so you actually get to meet your cohort of CSU uh, peers before you leave. You'll know the faculty before you head out and then you'll get to spend a whole semester with them exploring this beautiful country. All right, so I mentioned this earlier, one of the biggest questions we get is how do transfer credits work? Um, you can get your credits from abroad to transfer back to CSU. We have a formal process to kind of box you through that. It's gonna be a part of your application process. So once you've applied to a program, you're gonna be prompted to fill out 
this education abroad transfer credit approval form. I won't go into all the details now. There are step-by-step -step instructions on this form, but in short, you're gonna write in the courses that you wanna take abroad along with a course description. That gets sent to the registrar. It's gonna do an initial evaluation of the courses just to make sure that they can get CSU credit. Then that gets sent to your academic advisor where you can learn about how those courses are gonna play into your major um, as well as your general elective requirements. So don't worry, there is a formal process. You're going to know if the classes that you want to take abroad are going to work for you before you even depart the U.S. All right, so as you're preparing to go abroad, it's kind of three main groups of people that you're going to work with, work with. one being your CSU Education Abroad Coordinator. That's someone like myself. On the next slide, I'm going to introduce you to the fall team of uh, folks that you might work with in our office. We're here as a resource for you anytime um, between now and when you go abroad and even when you return back. If you have any questions at all, we're more than happy to help you or guide you to the right place where that question can be answered. You're also gonna, you're gonna work with your academic advisor, your academic success coordinator. They're gonna help you identify the classes that you need to look for during your education abroad program and make sure that you're getting the appropriate classes um, to stay on track to graduate on time. You'll also work with either your program advisor. Um, that might be someone at an exchange university, someone through our affiliate provider, um, or that could be, in the case of a CSU faculty-led program, the faculty member here at CSU. As I mentioned, these are the coordinators in our office that you might work with. We all kind of divide up advising by region in general. Um, so depending on the program that you choose to go on, you'll end up meeting with one of us. Um, if you have more information, if you look on the overview tab of your program website, you'll see who the coordinator in our office is for that program. And that's who you could meet with if you have additional follow-up questions about that program. We also have um, education abroad peer advisors. These are current CSU students who have already been abroad and were so inspired by their experience that they wanted to come work in our office. Um, they're here as an added resource to you. They can talk to you about what their experience was like abroad. Um, they can help in some cases even talk to you about some of the logistics for making your program happen for yourself. The advisors in our office are Brennan Ackerman, Claudio Rohner, and Tia Nunez. I mentioned this earlier, but if you are a student who uses financial aid um, here at CSU, the great news is that you can use that aid in most cases um, to pay for your education abroad experience. We have two coordinators in our office um, who specialize in financial aid for education abroad. Their names are Cindy Maris and Evelyn Martinez. You can reach out to them now with questions um, via the email address listed here on this page, specialprograms at colostate.edu. You can also schedule an appointment with them through the Education Abroad website on our Contact Us page. Um, same way that you would schedule an appointment with any of the other coordinators in our office. In that drop-down menu, you're gonna click Financial Aid for Education Abroad and it will book you directly with them. Beyond financial aid, if you're looking for other ways to help fund your abroad experience, we do have several scholarships that are housed in our office. You can see here the important deadlines that are coming up, specifically if you're interested in a winter break program for 2022. Um, the most pressing deadline is September 15th, so that's next week. Beyond that, we have October 15th, April 1st, and October 1st next year. For more information, you can check out our website under the Start Here tab, click Financial Aid and Scholarships. All right, so where do you go from here? Well, first, I recommend meeting with your academic advisor. Try to plan out the classes that you're gonna need from now until when you graduate um, so that you know during the term that you wanna go abroad, what classes exactly you need to be looking for. From there, you can come to our website, 
click start here and start looking for programs that might work really well for you. And that once you've identified a program or maybe a few programs, you can meet with the coordinators in our office who oversee those programs to learn more about them. If you use financial aid, you can make an appointment with a financial aid counselor. And then once you're ready, you just create an application and away you go. All right, that's all I have for today, for this presentation. Um, we do have several other presentations coming up. Education Abroad 101 every day at 9 a.m. We have a financial aid and scholarship session at 9.30 a.m. every day, um, as well as several other info sessions. Please check out our website for more information if you want to learn more about programs um, that might be relevant for you. Take a moment. Were there any questions lingering out there? No questions, Drew, and we are out of time, so we'll call it. Thank awesome. you very much. Thanks, everyone.